The Falcon and the Winter Soldier Episode 2 has succeeded in shedding more light on the plot of the series. I really enjoyed this episode. It was beautiful! This week's episode makes the right choice at the beginning, taking us a bit into the head of Wyatt Russell's Sean Walker, who emerges the new Captain America in the final moments of last week's premiere to the shock of both characters in the show and real-life viewers. The government asked Sam to give the Captain American shield to them, as it was the right thing to do. Sam made it pretty clear that he was only doing the right thing when he gave the shield to the government. But as Plot Twist has it, the government had other plans. And John Walker is the result of that plan. If you've watched the episode, then you know that Bucky Barnes wasn't very happy with the fact that the shield was given to a total stranger. It's actually kind of funny, because at the time he saw John Walker, you could tell from his facial expression that he wanted to just smash his face in and collect the shield. You little I cut you! Go! Go! That aside, let's talk about the Freedom Fighters and masks. So the last episode left us in the dark concerning the identity of this group. But like I said, this episode has succeeded in shedding more light. This group are actually super soldiers. Here I was thinking Bucky Barnes was the only super soldier. With their masks, their dedication to revolutionary violence, and their opposition to traditional power structures, the Flag Smashers come off like the anti fa super soldiers of deranged conspiracy theories. But what thankfully stops this dynamic from being too close to real-life political dynamics is that the Flag Smashers' main target is a thing that doesn't exist in our world. The Global Repatriation Council, which apparently came into being after the events of Avengers Endgame to help restore international society to normal after the blip. The Flag Smashers remind me of the Red Lotus from The Legend of Korra. The best villains in the Avatar The Last Airbender. Anyways, the way the Flag Smashers see it, the GPC cares more about the people who came back than the people who never left. Leader Carly Morgenthau declares the group's mission statement. We can't let the assholes who were put back in power after the blip win. You may recognize that actress is Erin Kellerman, who played in Fizz Nest in Solo, a Star Wars story, another character who seemed villainous until her sympathetic perspective as a foreigner of the Rebel Alliance was revealed. How are there a bunch of super soldiers running around that nobody knew about? It's a great question that leads to what is easily my favorite scene in the episode. Bucky takes Sam to visit an old enemy, which means he's a good guy, since we're talking about Bucky's Hydra days. It's Isaiah Bradley, the black super soldier. He used to be one of Hydra's greatest fears, the guy the US military could send to take care of problems in that interregnum between Steve's disappearance and the rise of the modern Avengers. Apparently, he fought Bucky in the Korean War and won. I took half that metal arm and goy. But they say it was also black in the 50s, which means he wasn't exactly rewarded for service to his country. Instead, he was imprisoned for decades and experimented on, with scientists constantly drawing his blood and hoping to replicate the super soldier serum running through his veins. He can't even talk about it for too long without getting so mad. He throws them out of the house. Sam is shocked. Unlike Bucky, he had no idea that a black super soldier existed. Maybe that was part of his reluctance to take up the shield. He couldn't wrap his head around the idea of a black super soldier. Yet there's a living legacy that he can inherit. The question is, why would he want to? Look how they treated Isaiah. But one thing that shocked me, though, is the racism. I mean, it was annoying to see those two cops being racist to Sam. It was so disgusting. Before we continue, guys, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our latest news and reviews on your favorite movies and TV shows. And also like this video, it helps a lot. Okay, it's time to nerd out for a second. Nerd! The Falcon and the Winter Soldier clearly isn't as much of a puzzle box as WandaVision was, so I won't be plying you all with nearly as many insane theories. But that young man standing next to Isaiah and letting his guest in and out of the house is obviously his grandson, Billy Bradley. In Marvel Comics, Billy Bradley is Patriot, a founding member of the Young Avengers. Who else are founding members of the Young Avengers, you ask? Well, there's Kate Bishop, 
who will be played by Haley Steinfeld in the upcoming Hawkeye show. There's Billy Kaplan, who we just met in WandaVision, and who we know is still out there somewhere. There's Cassie Lang, who exists in the Ant-Man movies. America Chavez may not have been a founding member of the Young Avengers, but she's certainly an integral one, and she'll be arriving soon in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. If the upcoming Loki show ends, with Loki getting the age to being a kid or teenager, I will lose my mind. I can't wait for the Young Avengers to form. Anyways, I thought the essay of Bradley scene was the highlight of the episode. Hearing about how Isaiah's heroism was rewarded with his imprisonment and inhumane Tuskegee-like experimentations was truly heartbreaking. That entire exchange, though, immediately made me think of The Punisher Season 1, which used a traumatized veteran to criticize how the U.S. government turns men into killers, sends them off to fight in wars abroad, and then cast them aside once they return home and have understandable trouble readjusting to civilian life. Of course, that vicious cycle was even worse for a black man because black people's humanity is almost always in question in this country. On top of that, casting Carl Lumbly, who portrayed both manipulated spy Marcus Dixon on Alias and lonely alien refugee Martian Manhunter on Justice League Unlimited, added another layer to an already powerful scene. Through both of those performances, Lumbly showed he knew how to play someone scarred by the things he did as a government soldier during the war. The Isaiah scene also reminded me of how Black Lightning handled Grave Digger, a Black World War II super soldier who defected from America after the war because of racism. Beyond that, though, I'm just glad this episode didn't waste any time throwing Sam and Bucky together. In any show like this, there's always the risk that competitive banner can sound overridden and unnatural, but that's not the case with these two actors whose chemistry feels absolutely effortless. Their salty back and forth made me laugh so much that there were times when I stopped feeling uncomfortable about the show's military propaganda aspects of the show. Out of my brain and mom. I can take the and I can fly. Who gives a shit? Anyways, guys, we've reached the end of this video. Like and subscribe if you like this video, and also leave a comment in the comment section below of what you think of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.